In today's episode, Wedding Reception Call. Don't ask for help if you don't want to be helped. Do you smell toast? Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Wedding Reception Call. Happened about seven years ago. I was no longer help desk, but in a system admin role within the same company. Habits are hard to quit for some people, so I am often reached out to like a tier one help desk. It was Sunday, the office was closed, and my fiance, parents, and some other family members were checking out a venue for our upcoming wedding. I dropped everyone off and drove off looking for a parking spot. As I circle around looking intently for parking, my phone rings. Since I am on the hunt for a free spot I pick it up without looking figuring it was someone I dropped off spotting a parking space. It wasn't. It was the CEO of my company with email issues on his Mac. I screwed myself. If I, I looked at the caller ID saw it was him and ignored it, he would have tried calling another team member or my boss etc. Because I picked up I am stuck. I now have to help. The issue was his gigantic email database on his Mac was corrupt and needed to be repaired. So as I am meeting with the venue manager seeing all the areas of the venue and going over the potential setup of our wedding reception cocktail hour etc etc, I am walking the CEO through how to repair his database. Painful to do on the phone and with him. I get him to the point where we have to wait an extremely long time for the database repaired. I think in great let this run and I will call him back. Nope. He asked 100 questions. How long is this going to be? Will I have all my email? How can I do work email while this is going on etc etc. I tried getting off the phone with him for 20 minutes, but he kept coming with the questions. I got off the phone and reached out to another team member to call the CEO and check on the repair. It took hours. The CEO used webmail while it was being repaired. I did see the venue and liked it. My fiancé was understanding. It was the venue we picked in the end lol. Update. Some of you must never have dealt with VIP users with huge egos. There was no good or correct answer I could give. Don't ask for help if you don't want to be helped. I have been working in tech support, level 1, for less than 6 months. I work for an organization so my customers are technically my colleagues. I'm still new to the job and industry, but I have realized that people have a superiority complex when speaking to tech support. Today I had a call from a staff member who couldn't connect to the organization Wi-Fi. I asked her to try forgetting the network, usually Wi-Fi credentials just need updating, and she said, in the most condescending way, that she couldn't. She omitted information so I had no choice but to keep asking questions so I could assist her better, but she would say things like what do you think I'm calling you for, duh, obviously. How would I know? She would interrupt me while I was explaining possible solutions, and she'd immediately say no, can't do it when I'd guide her on where to go slash what to do on her laptop. She also left me on the phone to mingle with other colleagues for three minutes. By the end of the call, she told me that she hadn't, prior to calling support, attempted to connect to the Wi-Fi at all. It. End of this story is that I asked a technician to go over to her, as I had had enough of her being rude to me so I wanted to terminate the call. Though, even when I suggested this, she still found a way to complain about it. Awesome. I've had colleagues tell me I'm wasting their time when I can't solve their problem in 30 seconds. I once assisted a colleague with locating a link on website because he couldn't find it. Instead of just saying thank you, he dragged the situation by telling me it wasn't there, put me on loudspeaker said my name very loudly and told me that I was wasting his and 30 other people's time as they were in the room with him. I am these people's colleague and yet I feel so disrespected. Don't call tech support if you don't want to be helped. I'm not a wizard. It's not fair that I feel like I can't be frustrated because I wasn't able to solve someone's problem when they didn't want to cooperate. Do you smell toast? Background, I'm an IT tech for a company that runs multiple private schools. I cover one school that has three buildings, one girl's site. Two boys' sites. The boys are across the road, the girls a bus slash tube away. Only started in December so still learning the details. 
spend my morning at the girls, trying to untangle the mess of an uncompleted phone system. Main barrier being the network cables are wired into the lifts with no termination or notes of what ports they are using on the patch panel. Grab lunch and head to the boys for the afternoon. Just settled in with my coffee and checking through email slash tickets when I get a call. From the other boys site. Internet and phones have just died. Mobile call, don't try to be clever nitpickers. Head over and have a look. Yup. IP phones have no power and the Wi-Fi is deader than my social life. Find the network cab that hosts the phones and fiber, no power. Lights work but power sockets seem to be dead. Wander next door to the staff room to try and find out what is going on. The toaster isn't working is the first thing I hear when I walk in, I can distinctively smell toast. Quickly I stroke my beard, no numbness, I am probably safe. Toast? I ask, puzzled. The toast was burning and I tried to fix it. Blurted one upset teacher. Now I had a clue. Checked the staff room and yes, all the power sockets were down too. I unplugged the toaster and went in search for facilities. It was his second day, so was actually excited about fixing the issue. He went down into the basement to flip the breaker. Reappearing a few minutes later saying there was no tripped breaker down there. This started our hunt. In a move I'm sure Douglas Adams would approve of, we eventually found it. Above a ceiling tile, in the toilet, directly above the loo. With power fixed and a fending toaster removed, everything came back up and everyone lived happily never after.